The first 10 days of camp are a true camp mode. They're the dog days of two a days. The light at the end of the tunnel is a long way off because all they see is the drudgery of practice. The key is to keep a schedule tight. When they're working, they're working, and when they're off, they can rest. You don't want to put things in there that, that are superfluous or don't really uh, accomplish anything. You get them up early. For them, uh, the, the horn goes off at 6.30. They don't necessarily have to get up at 6.30, but they've got things that have to happen. They've got to eat breakfast. They've got to check in at breakfast. Uh, we don't want them foregoing meals, for instance, so we check them through breakfast. Good old-fashioned oatmeal. Just like old granny used to make it. The rookies have to get going a little earlier because they've got to get taped because practice is going to start at 8.45. And the veterans are going to waltz in there anywhere from 8.15 to 8.30. And when they want to get up on that table, they're going to get up on that table come rookie or hell or high water. Look at these feet. Look at his toes. Been kicking cannonballs, that guy right there. This is like the ultimate feat. 12 years, look at them. No bunions, none of that corns or none of that other stuff. Usually the morning practice is our most arduous. It's the most physical, it's padded. Uh, we make them push through a lot of things. They're gonna be done about 11 o'clock. They then have a little bit of time. They need time for rehab. Some of them will get into the weight room. Some will get into the tub. Some will go in and get some treatment or therapy. Uh, they'll then uh, get some lunch, and then they're going to get some of that valuable nap time. You hope to block it out so they can get a good hour, hour and a half nap. 2.45, we'll then have another meeting that primarily is just looking at the film from the morning practice, so you can follow up with that as freshly as you can. Okay, so make sure we're talking and communicating with each other. The other thing is this. In every play that we've got, guys, there is, there is a place to go with the ball to win. And then we're back on the field at uh, 4 o'clock. Uh, much lighter practice. It's in shorts, very up-tempo, obviously not as physical a practice. Uh, and then they're going to be off the field. Dinner's at 6, special teams at 7, team meeting uh, where you follow up uh, with your offensive and defensive meetings about 7.45. So those 10 days are going to be very, very important. And they understand that, and they'll be able to look at that as a benchmark that, boy, just get me to that 10 days. There have been a number of heat-related deaths this past week or so in the middle portion of the country, and one has now hit the Minnesota Vikings family. 27-year-old Corey Stringer, the team's outstanding right tackle, passed away early Wednesday morning. Complications of heat stroke suffered on the practice field. It's been very tough on our football team. The reason we're here is to let the public know how much we love and care about Corey Stringer and what he's meant to us. And whether he was involved in the game of football or in the community, he's a guy that, that we could always count on. I don't even know how and when I'm going to get over this. And we know Corey Stringer, number 77, is going to be missed running through the tunnel on game day, having his number called after the game, seeing his wife and son in the lounge. <laughs> it definitely affected me. Uh, I went out and I couldn't even focus for practice. And, you know, I tried to hold it together where I wasn't crying, and I cried anyway in the locker room. And Brian, of course, knew him, and uh, even Kadri knew him. I was going to get weighed in, and, and Corey Harris came up to me, and he, you know, he told me, he said, did you hear about Corey Stringer? You know, I don't know. It just, uh, yeah. It threw me off. It, it just really threw me off that uh, he died. You know, there's a lot of things I want to talk about right now, you know, business-wise, but it's kind of tough. Most of you are aware we had some, we had a tragedy in the family, and I'm talking about the NFL family. Uh, Corey Stringer passed away. We got a couple guys here obviously worked with Corey. Corey was uh, truly one of God's gentle people for being as big as he was, and, and uh, he, he loved life. He was a hell of a guy. And it just, you know, it, it, it really makes it, of all the things we try to get across here, it's living each day to its fullest. There's a lot of things going to pull, pull you away, and uh, you never know what, what's going to happen. But it underlines something now. When, when, when we talk about 
taking care of yourself and being hydrated. You need, you need to make sure you've got the fluids. When Bill stands up there and tells you what you need to do in terms of the water or the combination of electrolytes and uh, the Gatorade and what you're eating over there, trainers and doctors look at that stuff and they're constantly monitoring it. We don't do things arbitrarily. We got the best people in the business. We got to pay attention to it. But uh, when a tragedy like this hits, it's tough on everybody and it makes you very aware. I'm going to have Rod come in and uh, let's just take a knee and uh, let's, let's close it out with a prayer for, for uh, Corey and his family. Rod can lay something on us here and, and give some thought to what, what's going on here. Father, we come to you thanking you that you are the lover of our souls, that you care for us, that uh, you have even protected us through this training camp thus far. And Father, we just want to say thank you for that. Lord, we lift up uh, Corey's wife and kids and their family. God, we ask that you would give them your peace, that you would protect them, surround them with people who will love them and care for them. And then, Lord, help us to do as the psalmist said, to number our days aright, that we might gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. We'll, uh, we'll do something organizationally. If you're interested in something personally, uh, we'll go through Kevin. Kevin will find out what the, what the family's wishes are, okay? All right, guys, be on time. Hey. Be where you're supposed to be now. Any one of us could have met Corey's fate. If you've ever had anybody, a friend or a loved one die, there's an there's a emptiness that comes over you. There's a loss of words. Some, the Bible describes it as a sting, the sting of death. Football is a small part in life. I'm a dad and a father and a husband more than a football player. Life is stressful. It's not that it's not stressful. It's not that we won't have a tendency to get stressed out. The question becomes, how do we handle stress? How do you handle stress in your marriage? How do you handle the stress of trying to make a team when you know that you may not get the fairest shake? Guys that have been Christians for a certain amount of time are able to uh, share their experiences with the young guys about being nervous, about you know learning how to handle your nervousness in front of crowds and cameras and people following you and you know the coach looking right at you that wants to see you perform you need that spiritual fluid to help you get through this because this stuff is it's the real deal jenkins two just just point them two steps and throw just let them go you gotta catch it about uh, 20 25 yards down the field i mean these first couple practices i just have just in the beginning before i can really get going just having just thinking too much just relax and play I can't relax and play, it's gone. Oh, it ain't gonna matter. It's gone. It ain't gonna matter. That's right, you gotta relax. I'm still a little nervous. You know? For some reason, I just got a little jitters when I first get out there. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Just things that I, I would be able to do with my eyes closed, All right, you know, stuff I'm having a little trouble with doing out here. It's crazy, because I've never had this problem in college. Not once, but it's, it's a different world. It's, it's the NFL now. These guys move real fast up here real fast. Nobody moves like that defense moves. Ah, I gotta get it down, OJ. I never tensed up like I have out here for some reason. I don't know what it is, but gotta shake it though, fast. I think he's just scared to death to go in there. He's, he's can't pull a trigger. Because every once in a while, when you least expect it, he fires a nice hard ball. But I think I have an upside that might just give me that edge. But saying that you know you can do it and actually doing it is two different things. I think he believes I can do it, but he wants to see it on a consistent basis. Quarterbacking is about consistency. When you got a guy like Elvis that gets up there and he hardly don't miss, and then you gotta follow that, you know, it's a hard task. And Randall tries to give me a little little hints. Okay, what if he's pressed? Then what you gonna do? Go to fade if you know he's blitzing. Okay, fade. yeah. Check that seven round. It's third and five, but sometimes they'll leave that open. I appreciate it. Appreciate you working with me. I just want to be a sponge. I'm going to suck up everything that I can from all these guys. And hopefully it'll work out to where I can be part of this team. Pay attention. Watch what's going on. I think each day I'm getting more ready, ready to, to get that chance, just to see how I react to it. They want to see the development. They want to see you get better each time. They want to see you fight from adversity. Because when it's time to put the gear on and go to battle, they want to know that if adversity comes, can you get out of it or do you sink in the tank? And those are some of the things that I think that, you know, they look at and they're going to evaluate. Hey, Marvin. Where's Marvin? Right there. Hey, where's the guy you got off the internet? Marvin logged on to a sex site and found 47. 
one eight hundred rent the linebacker. <laughs> Here we go. Up. All right, time, time. Come on back. Come on back. Get it. Look at your position on the field. Walk through it with me. Walk, walk, walk. If you're there, you're dead. I'm backside already. You got to stay inside out like that. There you go. Walk, walk. If I come back, you come back. If I keep going, now you accelerate. Boom. You got to keep that leverage, right? Yeah. This is a dream job, and everybody wants this spot. It's definitely going to be a fight. Everybody wants to play, but everybody can't. When you come up, stick one way, and slap him as long as you are, and knock his ass out of the way and rip your arm and go. Don't sit here and dance in front of him. Stay with it, stay with it. Keep working, work, work, work. Go. There you go, get after him, stay after him. I've been losing weight. Yeah, because it's so hot, you know, you sweat. I eat, but it's not like I'm really hungry. It's not like college. College, I think you only have 20 hours of meeting time a week. Here, they have you meeting about 100 hours a week, I don't know. If you're gonna rely just on what you're giving in these meetings, and you're not reinforcing it back in your room, it's not gonna add up. Now, the World World Champions, to crack this roster is tough. Rookies or first-year players, unless you have a special team's presence, I'll tell you right now, you got no chance of making this club. You gotta sit there and pay a lot of attention in the in the classroom. A lot of guys, such as myself, I'm not used to backpedaling on a punt. I don't know where to set a wedge on kickoff returns. Missouri's doing pretty good on kickoff returns. You know, he gets on a track, and you know people got to come to him a little bit more than him going to someone else. But uh, he doesn't run quite as well as Matthews does. I don't know exactly how that term started, but uh, to me, when I think of Turk, I think of the, the Grim Reaper. Because you're doing the dirty work of uh, having to grab somebody and take them to get cut. And it's, uh, it's never an easy job because, you know, you got the players, they know you're the Turk, and they have a different feel around you. But uh, they know it's a business, and uh, this is not a good part of the business. But uh, it's a business nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, just tell him uh, Coach Billick needs to see him. I think anybody who's ever played football to actually be the one who grabs them and, and uh, most of the time they know they know what's going on and it's uh, it's tough. But Hey Coach Billick needs to see you. Alright. Alright. Yeah, uh, just uh, grab your playbook and, and uh, Follow me, I'll take it down, see him. You know, he was sleeping, and that makes it equally tough <laughs> having to wake somebody up just to tell him he's gonna get cut. But, um, you know, make, you gotta make sure you tell him to bring the playbook for the coaches and then walk him down to the coach. But uh, he was real somber about it, didn't say much. Releasing a player clearly is the hardest thing a coach has to do. It reminds me, uh, not to be overly melodramatic, but there's a scene in a Clint Eastwood movie, The Unforgiven, where he talks about killing a man and the idea that you take away everything he has, everything he's ever gonna have. Now, obviously that's overstating it a little bit, but I can't help but think of that movie when I have to sit down and, and sit eye to eye with a young man and explain to him that there's no longer a place for him on this football team. I've been there, I've been cut twice. And so I have an emotional attachment with that uh, that I, I hope I never get too callous or too far away from when I have to do this. Coach Ortiz is here. Ortiz, come on in, man. How you doing? Not easy, huh? Let me grab a seat. Uh, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make any difference uh, to you, but but uh, I've sat there myself twice. It, it, it's not easy. It's it's the worst part of what I have to do. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that you understand, 
couple things because it's a unique environment for you right now. You, you've got some legitimate athletic skills. For whatever reasons, you, you haven't had a chance to develop uh, in college and haven't been tutored in the quarterbacking skills that it takes to compete in this league right now. The college coach in me wishes, uh, would love to still work with you, but the pro coach in me says, I ju we just don't have the time. There's a stark reality that There's everybody awesome. understands. They can you know, do the math that you're going to keep basically 53 players. So you've got to come in with an attitude, however unrealistic it might be, based on the numbers, that I am going to make this football team. And if you don't come in with that attitude, then you've got no chance. I just can't relax. If I can't relax, I can't play. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the next challenge for you. You know, it's not my place to sit here and tell you that you, you can or cannot play in the National Football League. Just because this situation isn't going to work out for you doesn't mean another can't. Um, what, what, I, I know you had aspirations maybe to teach or do something like that. I mean, what, what do you think your immediate plans? Let's say you don't get picked up by another team. What do you think your immediate plans might be? I don't know, Coach. That's a good question. I just I don't know what's going to happen. Did you, did you finish your, your degree? I you have one unit. Oh. So yeah, you need to do that. For certain. Because you've got some unique athletic skills, and I don't think it's something you should give up on. Oh, I'm not definitely going to give up. I, 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 just by, I think I know I can play the position, but I gotta, I gotta be able to get through just that part. I never right. had this problem before. I never had this, the problem that I have. He reminded me a lot of Dante Culpepper. Probably the strongest arm I've seen in such a long time. He he was uh, nervous, you know. I ain't never been nervous like this. I ain't never been nervous like this. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to tell him, you can't hold on to things. When you throw an interception, you can't all dwell on an interception. You just, hey, it's over with, it's done, keep on going. And Ortiz, uh, he tried to get through that, um, but it was difficult for him. And start to lack faith. And you can't play football without faith. Well, if there's anything we can do to help you out, uh, don't you know? Don't hesitate to let us know if it comes time you start looking for an NFL Europe team and you want to get a bit of a feel for uh, what might be a good one, what the coaching situation is, who does what. Uh, feel free to give us a call or Matt a call, and we'll do whatever we can. All right, man, you're a good young man. We appreciate your time. We really do. You can leave that, and, and we'll get you started. And uh, good luck with it. And, and let us know what we can do to help at some point, okay? All right, Ortiz. Very good. Ortiz is my boy, you know, and uh, I hope he watches and man, stay up, you know. It's hard, but, uh, you know, you got to keep on plugging until you, you know, make a fit in, and hopefully, you know, he can bounce back and make it to another situation that's better for him. All the rookies came in here a little tight, a little tense, maybe even nervous, but he didn't really have a chance, I think, to just loosen up. It's shocking, but you just got to move on. So good. I'll be back. Somewhere. With both Elvis and Randall, we don't want to expose them a lot during training camp, so there should be an opportunity. Obviously, we want to groom Chris and have him play a lot, but there should be an opportunity for you once you get the system under your belt. I'm not worried about it. I'll be back. It's not a sad thing. It's a learning experience for me. That's the way I look at it. It's not like, a, you know, I'm sorry to go because it's such a great program here, but you got to learn from it. you got to learn to overcome those mental, those mental things, and it'll take care of your physical part. But I'll be back. I'll play the game. This is a beginning. I believe he has the talent to do it, and he can he can accomplish it. But he also has other things that that he can do as well. You know, so um, I think he can use this a, as a platform to do other things. Jingy, my boy, though. Jingy, pull a little bit out to you, Jing. Rest in peace, Jing. Whatever you do in life, hey. He said he got a degree, so he got something to fall back on. So fall on back. Huh? That was him. Got the degree. Sports management. Yeah, you know. Oh, I thought Jinx had a degree too. Yeah. What school you went to? Don't fall too far, Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. How about number nine? Why'd you cut number nine? Oh, my God. He was ready to go. He was from the ghetto. The car didn't work and stuff, man. That was great. <laughs> number nine's mom's coming for you. Hey, his, hey woo, she's going to kick your ass. She's coming out. 47. Psst. Bring your helmet up here. I like you. Come on. Come on. So what's going on, man? How old are you? 24. 
Hey, Rob, he ain't 35. He's only 24. He looks 35. What's your first name? Kenny. Kenny? You got a nickname? Killer. Killer. That was a good piece, man. That was a good piece on you, bro. I like that. I like that. If he's got to buy his brother a Corvette, if he makes the team, he's going to be broke. He ain't going to have no more money left. Forgot Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam gets a Corvette before his brother. Hey, Russ. Keith here. Keith, right? Kenny. Kenny. Kenny here says he will kill anybody you put him up against. He wants to go on the first team, kickoff team. I, I believe it. Well, put him on. Don't be scared. Show me your meanest face, Kenny. Kenny, show me your meanest face. Can you wrestle the passer, man? Why don't you let him out there, man? Let him get a couple tries outside. Why don't you let him play linebacker? Because, man, I'm trying to find a man a job, man. Don't, don't listen to the coaches, man. They'll, they'll try. They're, they're not good. I love being in practice. I love just having fun with the guys. There's nothing like banging heads with Jamal. There's nothing like covering Shannon. It's just not. It's nothing like it in the world. Get in here. We got to go fast now. I hate when my coach pulled me out Let's because go. I believe that's, that's one play I could probably learn something different on, learn something new, learn a different strategy to get there faster, to make a play faster, to read something faster. God, damn. Ah. That's where I think my game carries over at. I think if I do it in practice, when Sunday comes, it's easy. So when I go in practice, I try to go just like I go in the game. He won't make that one. He won't make that one, John Jones. <laughs> John Jones. You guys also looked like you were having fun. I saw a lot of smiles out there today. Oh, and I mean, it's, it's the same thing we had last year. Uh, that's no different. Uh, and that's one of the greatest things we have about this team. It's one thing we do is we come to work together, but, you know, at the same time, we enjoy the game. I, I love it. I, I love, you know, being at practice. I, I, I love, you know, being around the guys. Shaq, if you watch this, John the Dog can say he can dunk on you and hold you to 20 points and a half. <laughs> I didn't say I could dunk on you. I think that's a challenge. I did not say I could dunk on you. No, I cannot dunk on Shaq. He might get one or two on me. Oh, you might get one or two. He's going to get the bowl. He's going to get one or two. Right the smallest back, going to get an elbow. Yeah. Uh. Man, that man going to pull the backboard down on you. Rod and Ray. I can joke with Rod. And he never takes it personal because he know I'm not trying to be personal. I can joke with Ray. And he know it's not personal. That's just the level of respect that we have for each other. Look, see how that goes? We just enjoy each other. It's amazing that... Uh, you know, at these late stages of their career and my early stage of my career that we jail the way we do. You crazy. You get one rep and go out. I took four reps. I'd go in there as long as there was in six. Now, maybe if I said something to another guy, you know, he might take it a different way. But Rod knows when I'm talking to him, I'm joking. Ray knows when I'm talking to him, I'm joking. That's just for, you know. But just tell Ray, yo. Just tell Elvis, don't ever leave the building early. Right. Make sure his ass stay in the building the whole damn day. Say, hey, six to building. building. We don't really need each other. We hang around each other because we want to. <laughs> because we have so much in common. We are so competitive. Uh, we get in the weight room, and even though, you know, they cannot lift me, what they try to do is they, they try to lift their weight as many times as I can lift my weight. How many years you got, Shannon? 12, Rod, approaching 20. Boot full of geriatrics. I just been blessed. We just love lifting to know that, you know, in that fourth quarter when we call on our body, we know we're going to be there. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. Come on. Fourth quarter. Ah. This sucks. You think you got to be big and muscular and, you know, you got to lift a thousand pounds. It's funny. Whenever I go into a gym back in Jersey or you now I'm working out in the off season, people come up, how much you bench? I make up some ridiculous. 800. You ain't too far behind us now. Just need a couple of tattoos on there. I'm going to back you off a little all day. We'll see how, how we go. At least it was an accurate. That's the second, yeah. That's the second one he's done already. At least it was accurate. Man, I thought he ain't caught a pass all camp. Uh, trust me. When he wasn't getting banged, he was catching everything. Here you go, big boy. Nice catch. Nice catch. Yeah, it was. It was. Damn. Can you talk about Todd Heath a little bit like you've seen on him first? Well, you saw some of the things today, that, that catch down the red zone. That, that's not easy to do, and uh, that's, that's what we're looking for from Todd. How much do you think it helps him having Shannon to learn from Oh, gosh, well. 
one of the all-time best. And on Ozzie Newsom, are you kidding me? Uh, that you can't, you've gone to the top of the mountain and you're sitting you know, at the foot of the llama, Dalai Lama, you know, taking the secrets. Well, you get a six or seven round pick, there's no guarantee that he's going to be on the team during the season. I know this guy's going to be around, so I know for at least the next 25 weeks, I got breakfast if I want it. If I'm tired, I guess I want to take my shoes, take my shoulder pads, take my helmet. Next year's rookies, beware. That's number two right there. I got somebody to do all that. Shannon's. <laughs> for as long as I want it. So, hey, I'm glad they got him. Yeah, but uh, he's going to have to learn. Todd. Todd. H. Angle. Oh, I got to get there. No, H. Angle. No. Who's hot? And, and he's willing to learn. And that's the thing I like about him. He doesn't. He didn't come in and say, okay, I'm the number one pick. You know, hey, I'm your heir apparent. I don't have to listen to you. Well, he does. Even though he's a rookie, he's a first-round pick, he still can't beat me. <laughs> Todd's smart enough to know he's not going to beat out Shannon Sharp as a starting tight end. He knows what Shannon Sharp represents to him, an incredible source of knowledge. Once you take that step, get on through there. Yeah, you got to get on through there. I mean, you got him initially, but then you end up letting him beat him off the top. Once you take that step and you got him, keep him there. We'll be in more tiger. He's, he's athletic. He is athletic. He's smooth. He's tough to cover. They just don't get a, uh, up against a guy that has that much speed. I know they've said that they're going to use a two tight end offense, so it'll be exciting to see how much they'll play him. First week away from Todd, it's been it's been a little rough, but I've had a lot of things to, to keep me busy, just trying to, to get the house in order. We've got most of our stuff, just the, the basics, what we need so far, kitchen table, a living room furniture set. I need to buy some more things for the house. He might help me do that and maybe put some blinds up. When he has a break here and there, he'll, he'll call me before lunch or after lunch. And it's nice I get to talk to him pretty much twice, twice a day. And I'm going to be going up for the scrimmage. It's nice to know that I can go see him if I want to. Look at him, man. Got that movie star look on him. Look at him. All I got to do is put on a pair of shades, boy. He got that, uh, that trooper look, too. Got a modeling career ahead of him. He'll always just be taught to me, I and mean, we've known each, known each other since seventh grade. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's kind of cute to see all these <laughs> these little girls who have crushes on them. What is that? You want to sign this? That? This? What is this? All right, it's about the craziest thing I ever signed. When we work, we work. We don't waste your time. If we can get done in 45 minutes in a meeting. We'll take 45 minutes, not an hour and a half. But you got to focus for 45 minutes. When I think of meetings, I think of nap time. You know, sort of like you know, time to unwind, relax. You always see the older guys like stand towards the back of the room so you can lay back. And, you know, your neck doesn't get jammed up a little bit. Oh, they get boring. <laughs> they, get, they get very, very boring. You know, given the choice between meeting and practice, I think I'd rather practice. Oh, it just, they're just boring. I mean, there's nothing to do. I mean, you, you know it. I'd rather practice. Especially like the first couple days of, of the first couple days and then like the last couple days of camp. The first couple days they'll put in like the most, you know, okay, here's how we're gonna huddle. Um, you know, the, the right tackles here, the left, like, I don't wanna hear about the huddle. Rod's been in this system, so he knows it as well as, as the defensive coaches does. So he's heard it over and over and it sounds so redundant to him. I've been in this system that Marvin Lewis has for Nine years now, so I don't even need a playbook. He'll say a defense, and I know the defense. Now, for a rookie, for a young guy that's just getting in the offense, well, he needs that. He's in tune to it. Me, I'm like, I wonder what my sister's doing. I wonder what my grandma's doing. I wonder if they go fishing a day. We need to do this, and we need to do that. You know, it's just like throwing everything we've learned out, and let's start over from learning how to walk. Like, give, him, give me a bottle. I'm going to start sucking a bottle with a nipple on it and then, you know, work up to a Belvedere on the rocks or something, you know? I mean, come on. If he's in a nine, set on him like you got it, okay? And, and we'll deal it out from there, right? But that's one thing we've got to make sure we're, we're set on. And that's what I'll watch him film with that right with you guys right now, okay? Chan, you can go. All right. We'll look at the group pro. Let him out to the team away. Well, I'll try, I'll keep him at 10. Watch it. 
leave, man. Hey, man, what? We need that veteran presence. When I came down to check on the building, says the guys were in for training, I noticed that one of the doors was barricaded with a table. <laughs> when I started to pull it open, I can't move it, it's too heavy. And I do know that there are players stuck in there. Open it up. Hey, goose is gonna kill me. Open it up. Don't fuck about no fat ass goose. Open it up, or you're not gonna be in here again. I can tell you that. Somebody, come on, get this thing out of here. Let's go. <laughs> and I couldn't do anything but laugh, but it, I don't think Shannon felt the same way. <laughs> Uh, he just said Goose got us. All oh, fun and games. You can finally get the eye poked out. I saw it when I came down. Who did it? Goose? I have no idea. You know. You know. You and the camera know. <laughs> we need to know who did this, because we will have retribution. All right. What Goose said? Somebody saw somebody outside, or I don't, I don't know how it came to it, but, uh, I think, I think, I don't, I'm not tr sure to this day who did it or what happened, but that's what we thought. Just because you're veterans doesn't mean that, uh, you know, that these rookies, and I do think it was the rookies who did this, you know, uh, just because you're veterans, you're not, you know, out of reach of, of these, these rookies. They're very tricky, they're very sour right now. I was goose, I know I was goose. I'm gonna, finish, I'm gonna go get his fat ass now. I just hope the, the person who is responsible for that really, you know, comes forward and, 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 and learns from that experience and doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, and it got moved up to um, to first stream nickel, and um, second on the depth chart at the corner, cause um, two guys went down. Hey, what's up? It's me. I was just calling to see what you was up to. Um, if you get this, give me a call back tonight. Um, I should be up for a while. All right, love you. Bye. You know, we're very serious. Um, that's my girlfriend, and I miss her, but at the same time, I'm concentrating on what I'm doing here. Um, you know, missing is fine and dandy, but when it comes down to it, her being here, or me talking to her, anything else like that, that's not going to make any difference out on the football field. You just have to stay up on it because there's no mistakes allowed saying that you didn't know something. Uh, I mean, they're not going to stand for that. I just want to come out and play my best on Friday. If I get beat on something, I get beat. But I don't want anything to be something that I could have controlled. This scrimmage is probably the first real time I will look at them and actually look, can they compete? Can they, can they make a place for themselves on this football team? The veterans will get anywhere from six to eight plays. And it'll be competitive. It'll be all out. J.O., I say we go in there and get our fix and get up out of Dodge. Hey, Johnny, man, what, you got your son's pants on? Look a little tight. Well, you shed a couple pounds. I know. Is Katri grumpy? I think so. I think so, because you just woke up. Yeah. yeah. No grumpy! Okay. You say so. <laughs> I guess he is. The scrimmage is primarily for the second and third level players to let them compete with one another, to put them in a sheer competitive evaluation mode. Uh, in the scrimmage, I was I was a little little nervous coming out, but uh, overall, I was just you know comfortable trying to prepare myself like I would for a game. Try not to get overly nervous or overly excited. You just I try to keep even keel. It's weird to see him in purple. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And hey, we got a three-man rotation inside. Okay, 
If we want to see, hey, the, the lights are on, let's get after some ass, okay? Let's see what the f we got here. I'm a game player anyway, dog. I'm a game player, man. Always been. Base, 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 Tackle! I need a tackle! Come on, Leon. Come on, Leon. Go. Out. Out. Get out of series. Got a little bit. See if you can come back in. It's coming your way! Open it up. No, no, no. It's fast, you know, this is a fast game, you know, it's the NFL, these, these guys, are, you know, he's the biggest and the best. You good to go, man. Hey, that's all it is right there. Hey, you know six? All we gotta do now is just finish strong. Yeah, man. finish it up. We're gonna be in good shape. We they completed one pass where we in position and didn't make the play. Nervous. I was real nervous, you know, went out there and I think I did some things well and then I did some things bad. So, so. I feel like I'm just nervous. So today was just a learning day. Watch film tomorrow. Just make up for my mistakes. Congratulations, man. Good to see you on this team, all right? In all, I think my scrimmage was pretty solid. I, I would assess it as a, it was being a solid scrimmage yesterday. A lot of plays. You know, it's the first chance to really show off in game time, so we had fun with it, though. If I did make a mistake, it's a game time situation. I got to get up, shake it off, play this one, worry about what happens on the film. Oh, I thought I did great. You got a touchdown, a couple of passes. What, what more can you ask for? Come on, guys, let's go sign some autographs. I got to sign some autographs. Ten bucks. You get done with something, you put a beating on somebody or whatever, you just let loose. It was just a good feeling that everyone in that in our locker room in that area survived week one. And we were just all happy and everything, we just want to enjoy it. It was something that, you know, I've always seen on television, and uh, it just be part of that, it was magical. Party, hey, people, hey, party over, party over TV house tonight, what's up? Gary Beck, party at Gary Beck's house, let's go! Party, 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 that's a very typical response because it's a get back to the locker room, it's check the body parts, yeah, I'm still intact, and I survived, and that sheer joy that comes out that, hey, you know what, maybe I can do this. We had a big loss with the injury to Leon Searcy, but that's part of training camp too. You've got to train your players to understand no matter what happens to any one individual, the mindset has to be that's unfortunate who takes his place. Searcy's loss is a big one, but the Ravens have an ace in the hole. 15-year veteran Harry Swain, a last year starter, has been brought in. He had been backing up Ogden, but now with the injury, Swain is right back into his own spot. Just got off the phone with uh, Dr. Curl. Uh, they were, surgery was delayed this morning, but they finished it up, and what it was was he had 
in the, the triceps at the attachment, there's the main attachment on the bone and then there's like little reticular fibers. He had torn it off the bone, the, the attachment. The reticular fibers were still intact, that's why he could still bend it some. If you had to have a tear, that's the one to have. Now are we projecting he can play in 10 to 12 weeks? That's what my understanding is. Because actually after six, it should be good and solid and then we're, it's a matter of getting all the strength back. Leon's going to get some surgery on his, on his uh, tricep. Should be back in about 10 weeks. Okay? Harry, how many Super Bowl rings do you have? Three. Three of them. Sammy, four years you've been waiting. You ready to step up, play tackle as a starter? Very good. For a little bit there, I was reading the papers. I thought we were going to have to cancel the season. That's what this whole thing's about. When someone goes down, someone else steps up. Now, during the season. That's what we're built for. I told you earlier, some of you guys now, Leave your present situation open to future possibilities because this thing constantly changes. We're going to get Leon back. We're going to get him back at the right time. we got 35 days before we play Chicago. James, Trap, where are you? You going to be there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One week down. How much left? Three. Uh, three, four, three four. Did you weigh me in today? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> in and out. I like 365. They find out who did that blanket? No, 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 no. Still investigating. Right. Week one is over. I'm going home with a red velvet cake. Looking good. My mommy is home waiting for me with collard greens and cornbread and macaroni and cheese. And that's where I'm going. Get about 20 hours with the family, so. Okay. <laughs> Gotta go do my dadly duties now. I'm gonna take the day off, but I'm gonna work out right. tomorrow. Damn, I just had a hard practice. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Watch out! I might go take the helicopter out to uh, the eastern shore. You know, I, I've been with coaches who believe in that old, you know, 10 straight days or two a days in pads and just kill you. Brian wants you healthy. That's the main reason why we won the Super Bowl last year. You know, if we needed a day off, Brian gave us a day off. If we needed to be pushed a little bit, he pushed us. That's the reason why you win. You got to know what your players are, talk to your players. We give him feedback, he gives us feedback, and we work together. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's true teamwork. For the next seven, eight, ten days, it's going to be pretty physical, pretty intense. Uh, but he gives, he gives you time to get off your feet. You go into training camp, you go into preseason, and you come out injury free. That gives you the best opportunity. You can have a great camp, but if you lose a couple of your main guys, that was the worst training camp ever. We got another three tough days of full pads coming up. It's going to be a lot of pounding, so I just want to get off my body and just relax my feet and let the joints heal up a little bit. So we'll probably go catch a movie or something. What's that, too? What's that? That's what I'm saying. 6.30? No, I'm Uh-uh. No. We're going to see Planet A. 7 o'clock, Planet A. Man, I hope y'all is all sold out. What time is that? 75. How long is that? I could have been in this movie for real. Really? How? Is it extra? Yeah. Right here. No, How the hell you mean involved that movie again? I had a boy that uh, he knew some people at Central Casting. They do casting and stuff. And they're looking for big guys. So they went down there and they liked me. I mean, I wasn't no, you know, Michael Clark Duncan in the movie. Did you know if you had any dialogue? You would have had any dialogue, dialogue. In there? You know what? I don't know because they did fit me for one of those prosthetic things, but I don't know if my mask actually, you know, had the capabilities of talking. Talking and stuff. Yeah, could have been one of those gorillas. Just. <laughs> Make a monkey out of you. I didn't want to do that, man. I backed out at last minute. The weekend was nice. Uh, we definitely had a little little time off, but uh, overall it was great to just relax, get away from things, see my wife, and you know it's 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 good time when you can completely get a football out of your mind and, and relax. I'm not sure which one goes first. Is, is this the bottom part? Yeah, this looks good. There's things we still have to put together and things that we've been putting together for the last week and a half or so, but that's that's the other part of the, you know, life. It's that's the the family life. First week away from Todd, it's been it's been a little rough, but I've had a lot of things to to keep me busy just trying to to get the house in order. But I'm used to the the busy hectic schedule, lifting, practice, running, all that kind of stuff. I am very much looking forward to going home and hanging out with the family. <laughs> I must escape from the killer. 
buddies. Oh, the killer buddies. The first killer week is buddy. over with. Uh, we have the first week in, in wraps, and uh, it's going to be a great chance to to kind of get away from looking at these ugly faces and uh, look at some beautiful faces and, and my beautiful wife and my, my three kids and spend some time with them. I'm tired of working out, to be honest with you. It's like, okay, fine, another sprint. Okay, fine, we're gonna catch another ball. Okay, we're gonna lift another weight. I want it to start to mean something. <laughs> this week showed me that we are in shape. Uh, it showed me that we're focused, that this team, as it has done in the past, all but with new people adding on board, knows how to crank it up at given times. When I put my foot to that pedal, that they're gonna respond. And, uh, and, and that was a lot to accomplish in the first week. That weekend we had all was pretty sweet. I'm tired now, I don't know. Okay, good to, good to have everybody back. As you look at the schedule, we talked about what these next three days are about. We went through this entire week just to get to these three days. Hot, humid. Well, they know the dollar, right? We don't want a real line back. My role is really to make sure everything uh, is orchestrated properly, to monitor the players physically, that they need to be pushed a little bit. Is there attention to detail? Is the focus waning a little bit? Or do I need to take this size 12 and, and put it up someone's butt occasionally to say, hey, you're, you're not giving me what it's going to take for us to be successful? We're going to find some things out in the next three days now. Don't make me mad today. I had a pretty good night last night. Don't piss me off now, okay? I want a nice good morning. Evan, if I see you on the ground again, I'm going to send you in. Stay up. That shows me you can play. When you hold, you can't play. God almighty, man. Upfield, 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 upfield. Is that, now, is that the best rush? Is that all we can rush? Is that the best you can rush? Guys, I tell you what, the clock has stopped. We're going to run this drill until we run it right, if it takes four hours, OK? We're not running. We're not reacting. Upfield rush. Is that how you rush? Is that how you rush? Rush. Eyes up, eyes up. That's it. Oh, oh, oh. Line up and do it again. Do it again. Oh, Michael. Oh, Michael. Come on, Michael. OK, he's down. He's down. God damn it, Femi. That's just focus. Bobo, tell him what solid means. Man on man. A man on man. Man on man. Man on man. Oh, we're just guessing now. We're just guessing. We have no f***ing clue what defense is being run. Ah, horse God almighty. Back in the huddle. Back in the huddle. Make it first down. We'll start the whole guy thing over. We're getting lazy, man. The communication's not happening back here. We're walking around here like we don't know what we're doing. We'll just start the whole damn thing over. Boy, we're not there. We're not there yet, man. We're not there. Somebody's going to get hurt. All right, take a knee. Take a knee. Well, if I thought, if I thought yelling and going off would help, I would, man. Uh, I, I really would. You know, I can tolerate a lot of things. I can, I, I can tolerate... tolerate Arrogance, uh, conceit, greed, right? But self-pity is one that just, just chaps ass. We got a bunch of guys, primarily offensively, face it, that are just kind of figuring, Phew, boy, how do I get through to Wednesday? That's all the day was about. That's all the day was about. That's just the way we played. Balls on the ground, mental errors. So we just wasted this morning. It was, it was a waste. I came out, I jeopardized your health. You came out here and wore yourself down. Put yourself at risk for tomorrow and Wednesday for nothing. Because I, 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 I hope. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look hard in this field, film and see if I can find one thing that says, well, that two hours was worth the effort that we had. God almighty, man, we're just, if we weren't better than that, it wouldn't upset me so bad. But uh, we got to find it. Suggest some of you go back and get your head in your playbook, get lots of liquids, replenish yourself, and let's see if we can salvage this thing tomorrow morning. Okay, because I can, I can, I'm overpaying right now. I don't mind paying full price, but I don't like overpaying. I can bring anybody in to fumble the ball. I can bring anybody in to drop the ball. I hope some of you brought your rings. Okay, and go, go back to your room and look at it a little bit. Decide if you want another one. Because uh, that's just not going to do it. 
just not going to be good enough. You decide what you want to do with this thing because that was not good enough.